from our right to our left in the first period. And the Hingham High Harborman, today clad in all red, versus the all black they had on yesterday. They will skate from left to right. And Mike introducing the, uh, the starting lineup for Hingham and uh, Matt Persononi. Personini was uh, the star for them yesterday, and he gets the nod again. Yeah, he really played well for them last night against MC. Kind of kept them in the game. But here in this consolation game, still two really good teams. A big key to the game for both teams is going to be staying out of the penalty box. Cost them both in close games yesterday. Both teams surrendering power play goals that ultimately led to be game-winning goals. A little bit of a different look up front. Uh, McNally will center Marshall Terras and... Uh, uh, a guy that we were impressed with yesterday, Gray Betts on the left wing, the freshman. Uh, Kornak and O'Rourke start on defense in front of Personini. Yeah, Betts, he's only a freshman, but we love we love the energy he brings. He's a big power forward, and he's a really great forechecker. Not surprised to see him starting today. Well, this will be the first time we've seen St. Mary's this year, so it may take a couple of minutes to get used to uh, the names and numbers here, Mike, but... It also doesn't help that they, uh, like many teams now, choose to not skate out their opening six, and they'll skate as a team out to the to the uh, blue line. But the guy to watch is Dante Marabito, number 12, the talented junior center. Now our national anthem. As we were saying, uh, Dante Marabito makes their offense go number 12. He'll be a uh, guy to keep an eye on for St. Mary's, uh, number 12 in white. and uh, Looks like his brother... Uh, Damon Mirabito will be skating on one wing with Dante and didn't catch the um, the other forward who will start, uh, but we'll get those numbers for you. Looks like it might be Eric Pedro, Pedro number 10. MC Athletic Director Pat Driscoll walking by, of course, in charge of this tournament. And also a notable absence for St. Mary's did not seem in warm-ups as number five, Mike Zampanti. I remember watching him last year. He's a great face-off guy. He's great in the defensive end, and I did not see him in warm-ups. Yeah, his brother Mark Zampanti is out there uh, starting on defense along with Brady McLaughlin. It is Eric Pedro, number 10, the left shot right wing out there with the Marabito brothers. And Marabito and uh, McNally will take the draw here to get this one underway in period number one. Off the draw comes to McLaughlin, quickly up off the boards to Pedro. He'll dump it in past O'Rourke. And Dante Marabito gives chase, number 12 on number 12. Number 12, Kornak for Hingham, trying to get it up to Betts. Betts now circles the net and retreats. Looks, sends it to McNally, cutting into the middle. Nice breakout pass there. McNally one on three for the moment. Takes a big hit from McLaughlin. Steered wide by goaltender Andrew LaRusso, the junior out of Peabody. In goal for St. Mary's. He's a veteran. He's played a lot of hockey Played a lot of games even as a freshman and certainly last year. Last year, the bulk of it, the year before, he backed up uh, McBurney, the, the real fine goaltender from St. Mary's. Now O'Rourke, a shot in, hits his teammate Terrors on the way in. Centering pass blocked by the uh, St. Mary's defense and Dante Marabito knocks it off the glass to himself. He looks wing to wing for Damon Marabito. Pass does not connect and back on it is Kornak for Hingham. Up the boards, intercepted by Zampa uh, by uh, Connor Foley, 27. And now Kyle Willett will knock it in for St. Mary's. Trying to find Anthony Bono. Third forward out there is Tom Fratty. And now stopped by the St. Mary's uh, defense. Connor Foley sends it in wide of the net. Kornak battles there. A couple of Hingham guys have been out there since yeah, the opening Hingham drop. Hingham really needs to get a break out. O'Rourke and uh, Kornak have been they out there four this out of the, Four out of five are still out there, including O'Rourke, who bounces it off the backboards for Kornak. And finally, McNally able to change, but they flip it to center, and uh, three players give chase. Icing is called here as Hennessy first on it for Hingham, but Puckett crossed the uh, goal line extended previous to his arrival, and icing is called. Yeah, interesting start to the game. You saw Hingham's offensive zone possession for about 30 seconds there, but then St. Mary's got it in and kept the pressure. They didn't allow Hingham to break out and a couple flurries of chances to keep that puck inside the offensive zone. Different line out there now for St. Mary's. This is Grady, uh, for Hingham rather, Grady. will skate it out. Jack Grady 
looking for Andrew Driscoll on the right wing. They've got Hennessy in the middle today. He was at right wing yesterday. But he'll center Driscoll and Grady, apparently. Puck comes back to Jacobs. Jacobs looks for Grady up the left wing. Stopped there by number 25, Mark Zampanti. Zampanti out there with Nick, uh, Nico Scali, Scali now on the back end. And St. Mary's, with a quick change, they go right back to their first line here. Trying to get a home ice matchup. Um, mismatch, perhaps. Shot saved by Personini. Kicks it to the corner. Good forecheck here by St. Mary's. Damon Mirabito knocked down on the backboards, and Hingham finally able to clear. This is Driscoll trying to poke it by Pedro. It goes into the left of uh, LaRusso, who banks it off the boards to Eric Pedro. Pedro now starts out. Can't get by a good forecheck there by Jeff Gordon. Gordon now, uh, another revamp line from yesterday. This is uh, Gordon along with uh, Frankie Higgins in the middle. And uh, number 17, Chris Flanders on right wing. Flanders did not play much at all yesterday, but he's out there skating wing on this wave. This unit, Dante Marabito all alone and takes himself off sides. Yeah, Marabito takes himself off sides. A good play, a good test by John Lastori. We saw yesterday a lot of testing at the blue line from these Hingham defensemen. Wouldn't be surprised to keep seeing it today. And you, and you said the, the shifting in lines from Hingham. We even saw that yesterday is pretty much old, most of their forwards, most of their D-men get involved, but they oftentimes switch who they're playing with, and it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do that as the game progresses. Foley out there now with Frady, uh, Fratty and Bono for St. Mary's. O'Rourke now trying to find Gordon. Can't hang on to his stick. Poked away out of the scoring zone, and stepping up for St. Mary's is Anthony Bono. Slap shot does not make it all the way through. Now in the slot, nice uh, pad save there off the stick of Connor Foley by Personini. Good flurry here. Good buzz by St. Mary's. Finally, Lastoria wings it around the boards and up for Chris Flanders, who redirects it into the St. Mary's end. But with Hingham changing, they try to move it up fast. Long pass up for Fratty. Misconnects. And now St. Mary's dumps it in deep. Kyle Willett. And a fourth line out there for, uh, now for... Hingham, Austin Cohen, he had a pretty good game yesterday. and He's centering this line of uh, Jake, uh, Jake Quilty and uh, Drew Hickey. Yeah, we so. saw Cohen a lot with Betts yesterday, and we liked what he brought in the offensive zone, but now, uh, once again, maybe just feeling out, getting a feel for the game, getting everybody involved here early for Hingham. Well, not even five minutes in, Hingham's already had uh, 12 forwards out there, which is uh, maybe a good strategy for Coach Messina. Yeah, it'll be good for them to kind of get their legs under them early here in a second game in two days, kind of get everybody involved. And if you have depth, you might as well use it. Good save by Personini there with uh, Nico Scali right there to pounce on any loose change in front. And Mirabito back out there now with Pedro and uh, Damon Mirabito. Back to the point to uh, Nico Scali. Scali, the defenseman, sends it in deep. And now good play by Betts right there to use his body and get it to McNally. Now quickly back to Betts over the line, two on two. Headed to the net is uh, number 16, Marshall Terrez. Terrez with it in the corner. Smartly back to Kornak. Kornak steps to the middle, shot goes through and deflects wide. Terrez with a good four check there. He comes up with it now, comes out the other side. Back to the right point this time to Jones through a screen. Gets through, Betts on the rebound and covered up by LaRusso. It's loose and skated away by Dante Marabito. Mm. Flips it up into the netting off his backhand, and the whistle goes. The faceoff's going to come to LaRusso's left. He's going to set up play there by Terrace to crash the net hard. If you don't hear a whistle, you might as well go after the puck. Saw it sitting right on uh, Andrew LaRusso's pads and was almost able to jam it home before uh, St. Mary's was able to dump it over the glass. 9.55 to go. First period of play. No score here from Malden. This is the consolation game of the Christy Serino Christmas Classic between Hingham in red and St. Mary's in white. Here are the Spartans over the line. Nice move there by number 19, Tom Fratty. Goes around to Anthony Bono. Bono centering pass, and a backhand goes wide off the stick of Connor Foley to center. Senior out of Nahant, Massachusetts. Now Jacobs, backhander over to Betts off the boards intended for McNally. It's knocked in deep again by Zampanti. Personini will leave it there for O'Rourke. O'Rourke trying to find Terrez, and Jumping up into the play is Jack Gray, uh, Jake Grady. Jack Grady. Grady in. Saved by LaRusso. Grady on it again. Grady's got an open man over here. Driscoll can't get it to him. And now St. Mary's takes it the other way. Foley in the middle. Long shot in. Steered wide by Personini. 
to the St. Mary's left wing corner. Centering pass up high, and a shot and a save up high by Personini. Good one there as Mike Desmond picked up a loose puck and wasted little time in getting a good scoring chance off. Yeah, Desmond with a great look there to come into the center ice and get a puck right in the scoring area, and Personini does a great job standing tall and blocking that shot. It's Lestoria in the middle and a swing and a miss by Hennessy. Or swing and a miss. Uh, he got the puck, he missed the net. Yeah, Hennessy again doing exactly what Desmond did. Finding his way in the slot, and when the puck's on your stick, trying to let it rip at that time, uh, couldn't get a shot off. Battle along the back, boys. McLaughlin skates around. He's broken up there. Uh, able to get it to Kyle Ouellette. Ouellette up on the left side for uh, number 77, Ryan Turen. And now St. Mary's will change. And some skating room for Will Jones as he comes up over the red line and flips it into La Russa's left. Quickly back on it is Andrew Kramer there for St. Mary's. And they've got some room to break it out the left wing. Nice hit there on Mirabito by Jeff Gordon. But Mirabito able to get it in deep. And uh, uh, circling the net is Pedro, but he can't get the puck out into the slot area where he needed to get it. And Hingham gets it to center. This is Gordon along with uh, 17 Flanders. They get it in on LaRusso, two on two. And LaRusso, Lo Russo will cover up. Good little rush there as uh, Hingham was able to find some skating room there as St. Mary's defenseman could not hold the blue line and resulted in a two on two. But uh, they'll be rewarded with an offensive zone draw and it's worth it after that breakout. Looks like Hingham wants to play a little up-tempo no matter who's out there. Just play the style where you're moving your feet and getting it in the zone where St. Mary's a bit more deliberate trying to set up plays and use some skill among their skilled players. Mirabito can't get it by uh, Gordon. Long wrister in, goes wide. Zampanti back on it for St. Mary's. He'll go to his defense partner. That's uh, Nico Scali. St. Mary's gets it in. Personini leaves it behind the net. No icing called. They continue play. Pedro now. Pedro in the right wing corner, back to uh, Scali. Scali threw a screen, deflected wide. Mirabito on it, centering pass. Here's Scali, closing, redirected by Pedro. That's Zampanti on the far side, my apologies. This is Zampanti with the puck. He'll dump it in opposite corner. Mirabito fights along with his opposite number 12 again, Kornak. And now long, soft uh, pass slash shot is sent in by uh, Scali. Good forecheck here by St. Mary's. We've said that a couple of times yeah. today. They're forechecking. They're pressing hard on the Hingham defenseman. Centering pass redirected by uh, Connor Foley. That was a nice pass out by Anthony Bono. And now icing is indicated as the puck does go the length of the ice. And uh, frustrated Tom Fratty just uh, skating over here. And yeah, and before that play, you mentioned kind of the different styles where Hingham's playing up tempo and St. Mary's kind of settling down, getting things going. And it shows... It's kind of each makeup of the team kind of contributing to that Hingham. We're seeing all 12 forwards. We're seeing all six defensemen. Whereas St. Mary's, we're seeing the uh, the Mayor Beatos and Pedro <laughs> out there every other shift. And uh, Yeah, they've, they've uh, lengthened the bench a little bit, but there was no uh, – it wasn't 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 by any means. And uh, Hingham now with uh, their fourth line out there again, Quilty and Cohen and, uh, and Hickey. Now it bounces off the stick onto uh, McLaughlin's stick, but he can't get control. Now Cohen can't get it by McLaughlin. McLaughlin will dance down the right boards and onto the stick of Jake Higgins. Uh, another defenseman we didn't see much of yesterday, but he's out there today. So Coach Messina bringing the student body today and getting them into the action. O'Rourke puts a hit right there on uh, number two, Colin Reddy. I think it's Reddy's first shift out there too. So St. Mary's now lengthening things up a little bit. But this line has been out there. I think Reddy's just getting a shift with this line as we see Turen, number 77. Turen throws a big hit right there at uh, Jay Quilty, or rather at uh, Drew Hickey. And now it's flipped up for Hickey. Hickey now kicks it out to the left wing, intended for Jay Quilty. Quilty hit over there by McLaughlin, and McLaughlin takes possession and heads up ice. He's stripped by Terrence for the moment, but they are able to get it up to Turen. Can't control. Jones can't get by Turen. A couple of big bodies there, and... McLaughlin over skates. It's a two-on-one the other way. Terra's the shot saved by LaRusso. And he had uh, an open, got gray bats for, the, for a minute, but the defender there played that well. I think that was uh, Kyle Ouellette back there caught on the two-on-one. And now Terra's is going to go off for a slash. Yeah, McLaughlin with a real aggressive play up here at the red line, kind of leaving his defensive partner, uh, Kyle Ouellette, out to dry there, letting up the two-on-one. But... Um... LaRusso does a great job standing tall in front of the net, and now we get a hang penalty, and we'll get our first look at the 
St. Mary's power play and the Hingham penalty kill, they did pretty much all they could yesterday, but that MC power play is dangerous. Saw Tom Albert goal yesterday on something nothing any of them could have done, and um, now we'll see how St. Mary's power play can do against this penalty kill. They got Dante Marabito on the left point with McLaughlin. The draw comes to Marabito. Marabito looks, quarterbacks the power play over to McLaughlin. Takes his time. He's got Pedro in the right wing corner. Pedro back up high to McLaughlin, and it jumps over his stick out into center ice. <clears throat> St. Mary's on a power play here late in the first period. No score. Pedro gives Chase the right wing corner. He's hit by Jacobs there. They're joined by a couple of bodies, and now it, the puck jumps loose to Gordon. They come out two on two, shorthanded. It's Gordon and McNally. McNally over the line, poked away by Mirabito, and Mirabito will try to skate it out. Good play, Dante Mirabito. <clears throat> no surprise. They get it up to uh, Carter Foley. Foley trying to find Anthony Bono, but it goes off his skate deep into the corner. Jacobs knocks down Bono in the corner, and now Foley trying to do a one-man job in there and skated away by Will Jones, who will scale at the length of the ice with 38 seconds to go on the power play for St. Mary's. No, no shots on net. No, they haven't been able to get anything going on this power play. They're almost trying to get a little too cute with it, but here we see another rush where uh, something could happen. McLaughlin gets it onto the stick of Mirabito. That's a good place to have it, and he's knocked down on a good play there by uh, Andrew Driscoll on the back check. Andrew Driscoll making up kind of the slack that Jack Hennessy was in too deep there, being a little aggressive. Almost got a shot off, but resulted in an odd man rush for St. Mary's. Mirabito steals it high in the slot. He'll circle around with five seconds to go on the man advantage. Mirabito in control. Now goes deep into the corner for Foley. Foley will take take a wicked wrister off a short angle and saved by Personini up high with 3.48 to go and the penalty killed. Yeah, Foley thought he was going to sneak one by Personini there. High short side, but Personini flashes the weather there and uh, gets a whistle. He'll get some fresh legs out here. We Take the penalty the, killers off. He did have the advantage of being a left shot in that right corner. His, his skates were actually over the <laughs> goal line extended, but what the heck, throw it on net, you know? Face off to the left of Personini in the Hingham end. Controlled by nobody now. Finally able to come up with it for the Harperman is Tommy Kornak. Kornak will try the left wing breakout cross ice to Grady. Grady leads the charge. It's a three on four for the moment. Nice play by Andrew Kramer to negate that rush along the boards. And St. Mary's with it behind the net. Backhanded up by Desmond. Can't find a breaking uh, Damon Mirabito. And now it comes back down low and kicked over to Andrew Kramer. Kramer will skate it all the way up over the red line and... Put it into the Hingham bench. 3.15 to go. First period of play. We are scoreless here. Want to thank our friends at Nantucket Nectar. Along with uh, Sullivan Tire. Bringing you all the action here. Along with Serio Video and My Hockey Live. This is Will Jones. Jones up over the red line and will flip it in. Nick Napolitano now out there for St. Mary's for the first shift, number four. So Coach Lee slowly but surely lengthening the bench a bit here late in the first period. Kyle Ouellette from deep in his own right wing corner will swing it around. And now Mirabito trying to skate it out himself, but he's caught over there by Gordon. They get it to Frankie Higgins. Higgins can't control, and St. Mary's picks it up deep in their own end. They can't control here, and a run by Pedro on Will Jones. Hang him a chance to change as they're going one by one to the bench. And uh, the fourth line out there, Quilty. So hingham has gone four deep the whole period. Smart, really maybe a smart philosophy here. Now Napolitano sends it in deep. Personini keeps it there, and Pedro runs Cohen from behind, and Cohen was knocked down unceremoniously, and no call as play continues. Sam Panty now trying to get it up the boards and this uh, looks like bumper cars over there as bodies run into each other. Mark Sampanti, nice play there to get it in deep and take a hit. <clears throat> Hingham will try to come out the left wing this time with Quilty. Cross ice. Does not find a red uh, teammate, but he finds Anthony Bono instead. Bono gets it back to Zampanti who dumps it in deep and now Jacobs tries to get it up to Quilty. Quilty Again, maybe a, maybe a warm puck out there. We saw a lot of yesterday. Guys having trouble uh, controlling it on their sticks. But Yeah, past minute or two, both teams really unable to find any sort of breakout here as the puck's just, just constant turnovers coming out of your own zone. That pass is deflected off the stick of 27, Connor Foley, again into the Hingham bench. 
the coaches ought to put on helmets over there. All the pucks flying into the bench area. Faceoff's going to come right at center ice with 1.28 to go in the first period. Mike Desmond will center this line for St. Mary's. Now O'Rourke dumps it in and gets his stick up high on number two, Colin Reddy, the freshman from Lynn. And that's a veteran meeting a rookie. And O'Rourke, we know, is not shy about using his body. And now Turen tries to put a run into Betts. Another veteran against another rookie. Different shirts this time. Nice pass over here to uh, Therese from uh, number seven, Lastoria. But now they're in deep, and Lastoria will step into it and shoot it about 10 feet wide. O'Rourke gathers it on the far side, can't get it in deep. It's on the stick of Desmond to Reddy. Reddy trying to find Turen, can't do so, and O'Rourke will pick up a loose puck and try to go through eight or nine St. Mary's guys on the near boards. He does get the puck in deep with 35 seconds to go. Lastoria now will stop it just on his side of the red line. Get it to O'Rourke. O'Rourke looks. O'Rourke trying to fight Driscoll. Picking up the loose change is Betts. Betts deep into the right corner with 23 seconds to go. Tries to cycle it to Driscoll, but the only guy there is Turen from St. Mary's. Comes to the point. Lastoria can't get it all the way through. It's a nice play by Willette to get it out, and Turen has it with 12 seconds to go. He can't get it by Lastoria. Puck loose behind the net. Comes all the way around to Pedro. Back to the point. Long shot in by Brady McLaughlin. Stopped by Personini, but good bid there by McLaughlin with 2.2 to go. Yeah, good play by Pedro McLaughlin there. Pedro to have the presence of mind that time's running out to get it back to your guy with the biggest shot and for uh, McLaughlin to be able to let that shot rip. And now with 2.2 to go, they pull the goalie, and I love this move. They put an extra guy out there. Foley will take the backhand draw. Not sure why they'll go to a lefty shot. He's going to try to get it back to McLaughlin, evidently. And the faceoff will go against 14, Jack Grady. Grady wins it in the corner, so good job by Hingham. Pedro tries to pitchfork it out front off the backhand, but nothing doing there, and the gun goes ending the first period of play. So interesting. Uh, there was some, some high-tempo moments and then some lulls in that period, but at the end of it, nothing to show on the scoreboard. The teams are tied at zero at the end of one period here in Marlin. Yeah, kind of an interesting first period. Neither side really shown they have a leg up on another. Not many scoring chances, and the ones that there were were kind of quelled by both goalies staying in their net and uh, defensemen just getting the getting the puck quick enough. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the second and third play. And uh, I believe Hingham is probably happy with how that first period went, kind of able to keep with them and stay controlled, and they're going to try to use their fresh legs throughout the game. So uh, we'll take a break here. We may uh, get a chance to speak with Coach John Missouri from Arlington High School. If he's, uh, we'll, we'll catch him when he comes by between the first and second period. And uh, once again, Nantucket Nectar is all natural. Grab a Nantucket Nectar over the holidays during the season. Anytime's a good time to quench your thirst with Nantucket Nectar, all natural. And uh, also Sullivan Tire. Go to Sullivan Tire and uh, Auto Supply and uh, take care of all your auto needs. I know I've got a get an inspection sticker this week, so Sullivan Tire may be on my uh, itinerary this week as well. At the end of one, it is Hingham nothing, St. Mary's nothing. We'll be back with second period action after this on My Hockey Live. Welcome back to Marlin. Uh, we're between period number one and period number two of the consolation game here at the Christie Serino Christmas Classic. It is nothing, nothing between St. Mary's of Lynn and Hingham. And uh, joining us between periods is Coach John Missouri from the Arlington Spy Pondas. And uh, Coach Missouri uh, led his team to a, a pretty good run last year, uh, uh, a titanic, epic clash uh, against Arlington Catholic. 
uh, which would have been a trip to the uh, to the garden yep. against these Hingham Harbor men. But uh, it was a good game, and uh, you got another year of experience, and the kids played well, and uh, the whole town of Arlington was there, too. It was a, it yeah. was a great event. That was a good game. It was a good season for us. We, uh, you know, didn't know what we had coming in. You know, we lost a whole bunch of players, and then we lost our top guy to prep school. So we were basically starting with uh, 10 new forwards and basically uh, all new defensemen. So it was a complete redo, rebuild. We didn't have the North Finals in a sight line at all. Uh, our goalie played really well, and uh, the kids got better and better as the year went on. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about today's game, what you've seen here, John. I mean, it's still so early in the year, but uh, the Middlesex League is always a, uh, an unbelievable battle for supremacy, and now with the two divisions, it's interesting the way the schedule lays out, but uh, there are always some great battles in the Middlesex League, and, and you, you look around, too, to teams outside your league, which is obviously you want to get a feel for other teams here, the Hingham's of the world and St. Mary's right. from, from Arlington Catholic's Division Two, but... Uh, what, do you th- what were your thoughts on that first period? I thought it was physical. I thought both teams played pretty honest, played pretty hard, um, got some net presence going. Uh, Hingham's using four lines, trying to wear them down. St. Mary's got a little bit shorter bench. Back-to-back days, I kind of think Hingham might be okay as the game goes on, but St. Mary's got good skill, and Coach Lee's a really good coach, and so it could go either way, but Hingham's depth might come into play here before it's over. Yeah, we, we talked about that, the four lines. That was pretty evident. They just went one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and only one penalty in the in the first period, despite the physicality. Uh, it went to Hingham, and St. Mary's had uh, the, the only power play of the period. I don't, I'm not sure they get a, a shot on net, uh, and maybe that's helped by some of Hingham's depth, and right. they were able to roll guys out there killing the penalty, but they were very active and, and kept the puck outside. And, you know, we see St. Mary's, their most talented player is number 12, Dante Mirabito, and they put him on the left point, the right shot, and I think they, they have to have the, the power play start and end there, right. and I'm sure Hingham knew that, and they're, they're kind of right. overplaying Mirabito on the power play. Right, yeah, Ten's a good player for St. Mary's yeah, as well. Ten, we we played active. them in the tournament last year. He's a good player. They're, uh, is it Zampazi? I think one of their top forwards is out not playing tonight. Yeah, he's Zampanti, a, one of the brothers, 25 is a defenseman, but yeah. uh, the forward is out today. Yeah, but, he's usually number five. He's a good player. Yeah, but you're uh, right. Mirabito, 12, and Pedro, 10, are very active and yep. good with their hands. And, yep, and, they got uh, good skill. They can play. But they you're right. Play. You're right about uh, they were a little bit shorter bench, and you know they yeah. they kind of want to take advantage when those guys are fresh to get them out there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean Tony's just throwing them over the boards, and he's got that depth. We've been fortunate the last couple of years throw four lines out. This year, the first few games, we've played 14 forwards. Wow! Right off the bench and 6D every game in both goalies. So that's good. That's we're good. We're throwing 14 out and uh, letting them slug it out and see who wants to uh, be the top nine forwards. Let's say uh, you brought up goaltending when we were talking about your team, and uh, we saw some great jobs yesterday here. Personini, the the uh, goaltender from Hingham, who's in there again today, stood in his head against Malden Catholic. It was a two nothing final, but could have been much worse. Uh, you know, Hingham didn't play that badly, but uh, as the game wore on, Malden Catholic wore them down, and and Personini really kept them in it. And uh, I saw a game Saturday between BC High and St. John's, and the two goaltenders there were spectacular through two periods, and then ended up 1-1. And Gold, and LaRusa for St. Mary's doing a good job here. So right. uh, goaltending has become such an important part of the game. Yeah, I think Coach Parker a few years ago called the game goalie, and he's yep. just about right. The game's changed so much that the goalies are the uh, most important guys on the ice by far. Yeah. You know, and... Um, and you've got two. We've got, well, we've got two, and they're only sophomores, and we got two freshmen, and we're trying to figure that out. we got some things we're trying to figure out. You know, when we figure some things out, I think we're going to be pretty good. We have some pretty slick forwards. You know, I I don't know that my Winchester teams that I had were deeper than what I have right now here in Arlington in the next couple of years coming. We're, we're pretty deep. I don't usually say that too much. No, that's pretty high praise. Yeah, I don't say that too much. We're pretty deep up front, and I got a few good defensemen. We're, we're From game to game, we change our last three defensemen. So the guys who are playing four, five, and six are different every game. So and, keep, and we're keeps rolling it competitive them in yeah, practice. Yeah, yep. Yep, Coach Burns kind of used to do that to us. <laughs> so the, 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 we got a couple of minutes left here, but let's talk a little bit about the Middlesex League. I, I refer to it a little bit, and, you know, you've, you've uh, been a Middlesex League veteran, as you mentioned, at Winchester and now at Arlington, and uh, it's always competitive. It's a big league. Uh, there were days when it was uh, the haves and the have-nots, but uh, it's always a struggle through the, the familiar names, but who looks to be the teams to beat this year? 
Well, I think Burlington for sure and Woobin. Woobin's a little dinged up right now. They came out of that uh, midway through that Burlington game. They took two injuries, but that game was like a college hockey game. The first period in that game was holy cow. That was big boy hockey. Yeah. Um, and neither team's really been the same since that game. It was almost like an Ali Frazier fight that they're going to need a little time to recover from that one. <laughs> um, you know, Burlington ended up winning, but, you know, in that game, like I said, Woobin lost their top D, that third line center. So the, those two teams are the two. And then, you know, Winchester's off to a great start. Um, you know, upset in Burlington last week. They're off to a great start. And Redding's got a really good team. You know, that was just an anomaly. Who knows what went on last year. But, you know, they're coming with thunder again. And so it'll be a competitive league. It's, you know what, it's the last great league left. You know, it really is. You know, with, we don't have to worry about scheduling 10 games. What, you know, it's what high school hockey used to be. It's the last league left that that that's that big that has that much camaraderie within the league has well, ri- and, rivalries every yeah, night. Yeah, it, it, rivalries, and I like what they've done about a lot of the teams now. A lot of the schools will have the boys' game and the girls' game back to back, the same opponents, and you know that that starts some traditional stuff, and people yeah. can expect how to schedule. And the other thing about it, it's all it has been, it always has been, and it's especially true now. It's a coaches' league. Yeah, and the, you look at some of the coaches in that league, top to bottom. They're, as you said, it's friendly competition, but everybody wants bragging rights, and there's such good hockey guys. Yeah, in that no, league. all the coaches get along. You know, look at hey, the Catholic, the Catholic Conference is the most talented league. When I say we're the last great league, I mean we're the last league to have eight, ten, twelve teams and right. be competitive. And you know, it's what you get worried about high school hockey. You and I were talking about it before the game. You get a little bit worried about what's going on, and we got to do some things and look at some things the way we're doing it and make some changes. You know, because if we don't start bailing some water off the ship, it's going down. <laughs> well, for the good of the kids and the good of the fans. I yeah. Mean, high school hockey in Massachusetts, great. We love being a part of it, and uh, we hope to be in uh, in the Burns rink and doing some games for the Spy Ponders yeah. and uh, the Cougars as well. And, yeah. And, Way uh, along, Jones. We're, we're going to see you around <laughs> the frozen ponds a lot this year, and wish you all the best. All right. Thanks, Mac. Thanks for joining Keep us, Keep up the John. good work for high school hockey, bud. Appreciate it. Coach John Missouri from Arlington. And we're going to go back to second period action momentarily between St. Mary's and Hingham. We go into period number two, scoreless. Good stuff. Are you ready? Hingham. Welcome back to Malden. Second period action underway between St. Mary's and Hingham, and this is Dante Mirabito on the go, right off the opening faceoff of period number two. Can't get around Marco Rourke, and uh, they try to swing it around to Pedro now, and Zampanti will close from his left point position to Mirabito in front. C- finds a cutting uh, brother Damon Mir- Mirabito, but it slides off the tape of his stick onto the stick of Betts. Betts goes behind the net over for. Kornak, and they are able to get it to center ice. Long pass up intended for Mirabito, broken up by O'Rourke. Comes to O'Rourke once again, kept in at the line by Pedro. Pedro in the corner to Dante Mirabito. Mirabito in front, and a goal by Pedro! You can almost sense that line scoring a goal soon enough. They were doing what they wanted to do there. A lot of a lot of good passing plays on that shift and in the first period, but especially here as we open the second, they were kind of moving fast. And Pedro, Pedro's the beneficiary of Marabito's great passing, finds him streaking toward the net, and uh, does a great job beating Perini, Persinini on the one-timer. Yeah, strong puck presence in front by Pedro. He was not going to be denied. And here's St. Mary's on the go again now with a one nothing lead. They're in close, but play finally broken up, and uh, Jacobs gets it to the line but not out. It's all St. Mary's here in the first minute of the second period. And finally, Hingham able to get it out. Jacobs... Gets it up on the wing to uh, Jack Grady. Grady will send it in. Saved by LaRusso. LaRusso. That goal will be, uh, should be Pedro from Marabito. Uh, and it'll come at 48 seconds of the second period. St. Mary's leading it one to nothing. Jacobs can't control and breaking free is uh, number eight, Bono. It's a three on one for the moment. Bono backhanded pass. Nice play by Will Jones to redirect that pass. And they get it up ice to Grady. 
Grady can't get it to Hennessy in the middle, and Bono will backhand it towards the Hingham end for St. Mary's. Or checking is Tom Freddy. Freddy now can't control. They get it to the point. Long shot in, blocked by Jones. Goes to Jacobs. Long pass up to Driscoll. Driscoll leaves it for Hennessy. Hennessy, top of the circle, shot. Saved by LaRusso and covered up with Jack Grady right there for Hingham, looking for any loose change. You see there, it looks like Driscoll kind of lost the handle at the blue line, but luckily he saw Hennessy streaking toward him and was able to leave it for him. Hennessy gets a good look off the LaRusso. He's able to control that rebound, force it face off here. Higgins on the draw with Desmond. They get it to Gordon. Gordon takes a big hit up high, and I think Colin Reddy's going to going to be called for a high stick here. Yeah, Reddy just kind of lost control there. He kind of, his eyes lit up with a with a guy square right in front of him that he could hit and uh, just kind of got a little too aggressive there. You know, he's a freshman. He's trying to impress the coaching staff, trying to earn himself a little more time, but uh, it's a tough break for him. So first power play look of the day for Hingham. They'll have McNally out there with Hennessy and Driscoll up front. Jacobs and O'Rourke on the point, and uh, Pedro and Mirabito killing the penalty. Big surprise, huh? They've yeah, seen a lot of ice tonight. Mirabito trying to snake it away from McNally. Jacobs now finally able to go over and help, but they can't get control. Mirabito with it. Pedro lurking in front, shorthanded. This is a hang and power play, folks. And uh, there's a three wood down the fairway right there by Brady McLaughlin. Dead over the head of uh, Personini, and faceoff will come outside. The Hingham blue line, but 107 to go on the Hingham power play, and there's been nothing to show for it. Yeah, it's been all St. Mary's here on Hingham's power play. You see Marabito won the battle in the corner and got it up to McLaughlin there. He had Pedro in front, but uh, kind of sailed off on him there. Connor Foley on the shorthand draw with McNally. Hingham on the power play here for another minute two. O'Rourke will take it in himself. He's all alone deep in the corner, and he's knocked down by Andrew Kramer, and St. Mary's able to clear. I'm surprised they missed that tripping call there. Number 24, uh, Andrew Kramer got his stick in the skates of number 18, Jake Quilly. Hennessy now back in. This is going to be icing unless they hustle. McNally does hustle, beats Kramer, gets it to Terez. Terez with an open man back here. That's uh, Hennessy. And uh, Hennessy's pass goes wide. Gordon, Hennessy, and McNally out there now with O'Rourke and Terez. Four forwards. Hennessy now backhands down the left wing. Mirabito sells out, leaves his feet and blocks the puck and knocks it to the corner. Zampanti gets it around now. 16 seconds to go on the Hingham man advantage and able to clear is uh, 27 Connor Foley for St. Mary's. And kill off more valuable time. Five seconds left now. Mirabito's been out there the whole period, I think. Long pass up for Higgins. Higgins into the zone. Can't get by number 15. The Willette now open on the far post is Gordon. Long shot in. Knocked down by the glove of Willette, but right onto the stick of 16 Terrors for Hingham. He gets it in the corner, but Willette on it again, and now it's iced by Zampanti as the penalty has expired, and uh, icing will be called against St. Mary's, but they killed that off rather easily. Yeah, I'm not sure Zampanti may have thought that there was uh, still some time left, or he was just tired and a desperation ice. But uh, either way, icing is the call, and Hingham will get an offensive zone draw here. Yeah, if it were a two-minute penalty, they'd still be killing. But Face-off in the St. Mary's end, controlled by nobody for the moment. Now on it is uh, 19 Drew Hickey for Hingham, and big hit behind Foley on uh, Cohen. Cohen now will chase uh, Bono behind, and they get it up ice to number 19 Fra- uh, Frady, who redirects, but Hingham gets control on their own end. Drew Hickey now comes cross ice, but Foley intercepts the pass and sends Frady away, but it's poked away by uh, number four for Hingham, J- uh, J- uh, Jake Higgins. Battle over there, nobody controls, and now it's sent in by Connor Foley. Quickly on it behind is Bono for St. Mary's, but he loses to Jacobs, who gets it up ice to 18 Quilty. And now we get a slash call on St. Mary's. It's going to be Connor Foley. Got another look here at Hingham's power play. Hoping they can do something better than last time. Uh, 
Last time we saw St. Mary's kind of dominate for a little bit thanks to the aggression of Pedro and Marabito just kind of displaying their skill. But uh, now Hingham will get a second look. They got fresher legs, and Marabito and Pedro have played more minutes, so they're <laughs> even more tired. So uh, maybe better looks here. Marabito with it and uh, lifts it calmly out and the length of the ice to kill off the first 10 seconds of the penalty. Personini leaves it for O'Rourke. O'Rourke will look things over down ice and come out right on one-on-one on, one on uh, Pedro. They get it up to Hennessy. Long wing to wing for Terrace. Terrace gives chase. Oh. And they're going to whistle icing on this as Hingham tried that play the other the other side and it almost went for icing, but they waved it off. This time they try it this way and it does go for icing. Yeah, I'm not sure about that icing call. It looked it looked from up here that Terra has kind of beat the puck and got a piece of it before across the red line, but Terra thinks the same thing, but the official saw it otherwise. So a, a power play face off of Hingham in their own end. McNally loses to Mirabito. Mirabito behind the net. One minute to go on the man advantage for Hingham as they trail it one to nothing. Terrace gets it to Gordon. He'll slow things down. Lead for Hennessy. Hennessy had an open man on the far side. It's Gordon. Gordon with three open men and passes it by McNally in the corner. McNally now trying to find Hennessy, but it's intercepted by Mirabito, and he risks it the length of the ice. It kills off more time. 37 yeah. seconds to go on the hang of man advantage. You've been seeing with these skilled, offensive-minded uh, guys killing penalties for St. Mary's, Mayor Beto and Pedro, kind of stretching out in their own zone, and it's resulting in some open Hingham guys. Here's O'Rourke getting frustrated and trying to go in and do it himself, and it goes as a shot on net, but very calmly handled by Andrew LaRusso in goal. We're down to 25 seconds to go on the St. Mary's penalty, and a 1-0 St. Mary's lead with 9.18 to go in the middle period. Off the faceoff, Cohen in the corner. Cohen trying to get it back to Jones, but St. Mary's with possession, but they lose to Jones. Now Jones gives it away to Brady McLaughlin on a, on a pass attempt there, and it's kicked all the way into the Hingham end with six seconds to go on their power play. One last rush here. Jacobs will go wide, cross ice to uh, Hickey, and there's another penalty going to come here to St. Mary's as Brady McLaughlin's going to visit the sin bin once again. Brady McLaughlin, he's a huge defenseman, but got oh, actually, really low there. And, yeah, that's uh, his, his first call. His first penalty. I, my apologies. It's going to come at 6-12. A trip to McLaughlin. He just, he, he's been active hitting, so we yeah. just... And he might have been going for a hip check there, but uh, got really low, and he caught him below the knees, and that'll be tripping 100% of the time. So Mirabito and Pedro out there for the third time this period, killing a penalty, and Pedro's Heels. shorthanded. Pedro's hooked down. And we're going to go to four on four, and Pedro collides with O'Rourke and knocks not. him down after the whistle. But just continuation, and O'Rourke will skate to the penalty box, and a slash is going to be called on O'Rourke. It's going to come at 6.21, so they only had a power play for nine seconds. Yeah, well, like I said, those those skillful guys such as Pedro and Marabito, they may stretch out in the offensive zone and play aggressive, but they result in chances like that with, uh, with more open ice. And uh, it's a shame they can't be out here in a four-on-four -four right now. <laughs> and now it's a parade to the penalty box as Hennessy on the breakout gets spilled by Zampanti, and Zampanti's going to get a trip to join McLaughlin in this, so we'll, we'll play some four-on-three here. Now there's going to be a lot of space, especially with two of St. Mary's best defensemen, especially McLaughlin here. Kind of everything will open up now for uh, the Hingham offense playing four on three here. Three minors in 14 seconds. And Hingham will use their timeout here to keep their uh, most skilled players. And an interesting look here before the timeout. Fresh. We saw Marabito and Foley out there for St. Mary's. I'm not sure if it was a defensive, draw, defensive zone draw strategy that we often see two centers. But interesting playing four on three down, having two forwards out there. And it could potentially be because they're two, two of their best defensemen all are sitting right. in the Sinman. Great point. But Mirabito's played defense on the power play. He's played defense on the uh, man down. But they're going to have to play four on three for a while. Let's play four on three for a whole minute and 16 seconds and then five on three for another 10 before Saint they Mary's, get their guy Saint back. Mary's goaltending coach Devin Anno over there talking to 
his protege, Andrew LaRusso. Devin, a pretty darn good goaltender in his own right out of Linfield. Does a great job with the kids on Mark Lee's staff. And St. Mary's staff kind of joking around it. <laughs> They're down four on three here for a little while. And I, I love the timeout call here from Hingham. Kind of settle things down. Yep. You see three penalties in a span of less than 15 seconds. So you say, okay, four on three, a lot of space. You guys are talented. We, <laughs> they have the four guys they have out there for a reason. So yeah, no, uh, oh, if there was ever a time to tie it up, it would be now. You know, O'Rourke would be out there, but he's in the box. So yeah. they'll go with McNally and Hennessy and Jones and Jacobs, the veterans. Jones poked away by Foley. Nice play, but they're able to keep it in and open in front for the moment is McNally, but Hennessy can't get him the puck. Nice play by uh, Kramer. Kramer without a stick now. It's four on three. One of the defensemen for St. Mary's has no stick. Long shot through by, uh, long pass through by Jacobs. Knocked wide. And the net is off now. And the, that's. Boy, the goaltender moved that one. <laughs> that's got to be something. That thing was six feet off. Smart move by Andrew LaRusso there, but uh, I'm not sure if there's a rule in the rule book there, but smart move to, he saw it was kind of off and decided, hey, well, we got let's one guy playing without a stick. Let's, yeah. let's put this off here. So now we're down to uh, 52 seconds on the first penalty, which will be a four on three, and a shot by Jones off the stick of Pedro. Pedro and uh, Bono out there. Again, two forwards for St. Mary's in this four on three man down. McNally. Well, we, have, we haven't seen any of the third pairing from St. Mary's. So uh, if you got two of your top four guys in the box, save, save one of them, I guess. Shot by Jacobs, saved by LaRusso. McNally circles. McNally with time and space leaves for Jacobs. Back to McNally. McNally cross ice looks for Jones, the wrister. Blocked by uh, Willette. Good play by uh, Kyle Willette. And now Pedro off the boards, can't get it out. Jacobs keeps it in. They got a four on two for the moment. And now jumps over the stick of Hennessy. Hennessy turns, looks, sends it around to Jacobs. Four seconds, three seconds now on the four on three. Jones up high, finds Hennessy open. Hennessy can't control, and Willette sends it the length of the ice. That's icing because it's four on four. I don't think Dante Marabito knew they were playing even. And uh, it is, that's clear icing. Official didn't like that. It's four on four for another four seconds, and then momentarily, St. Mary's will have a man. Uh, Hingham will have a five on four, and then St. Mary's will even things up again. Like right now, Hingham's a man up for one second, but now we're all back to full strength. And Mirabito in alone. It's going to be a hook call on Jeff Gordon here, and St. Mary's going to go on the power play if they don't score on the delay. Goaltender is out. They've got an extra attacker on. Delayed call coming here. Now they've got one, two, three, four, five, six on there. Up high. And another trip there as uh, Foley is taken down. But the first call is going to be on Jeff Gordon for a hook. And a lot of times hooking we see are, are lazy penalties. But I don't even think that was a lazy play by Jeff Gordon. That was caused just by the speed and skill of Marabito to yep. get by Gordon. And he forced Gordon to hook him there or uh, else he would have been all alone with Personini. So not a bad penalty by Gordon, but it's set up by, that was Mayor Beto forcing oh, the Mayor penalty. Mayor has got wheels, and, and he flew to the net. Yeah, that was a lot more Mayor Beto drawing a penalty than Gordon getting a penalty. And it was kind of a, a Chinese fire drill out there for the moment with uh, guys coming out of the box. and goes over to Mayor Beto, left point, back up high to Brady McLaughlin. McLaughlin tees it up, sends it through. It does get through, but goes well wide, and the net comes off here, and Faceoff's going to come in to hang him in with 6.33 to go, second period, and 1.19 to go on the St. Mary's power play. See the uh, Austin prep team down to our right, lim limbering up here. As they will face Malden Catholic in the title game. Here's a shorthanded bid for Terez momentarily. He gives Pedro a little lumber there. Terez, nice leverage there, and sends it out in front. McNally, backhanded shot, save. By uh, Lo Russo, good bid by Hingham, short-handed, and yeah. that was all Terez. Yeah, Terez a great play in the corner, and McNally he won't see that very often. Short-handed chance in front, but a good play by Larusso to be alert and able to yeah. deflect that shot aside. It was all Terez work, and then good job by McNally to find open space, as we said yesterday about uh, one of the guys who scored the goal from MC Goldstein. 
The Cougars taking their pregame walk right in front of us here. Icing called here on St. Mary's as they sent it the length of the ice with a man advantage. So hanging the beneficiary of the play there. And both teams try to reorganize here as St. Mary's will change the power play unit. Hingham will have Hennessy and Driscoll up front with Jones and Jacobs. The defensive pairing trying to kill the penalty and Desmond now wins the draw for Ouellette. Back to Desmond. Desmond stolen by Hennessy for the moment. Desmond gets it back. Nice play. Trying to find Reddy over here. Can't connect. And now Zampanti steps up into the play smartly and sends it in deep. That's, a, that's not a good call, I don't think. Well... Yeah, the official makes the call. He's not on the line. Zambanti thinks he got over the line, but uh, the official saw it differently. Boy, he looked like he was over the line, but we couldn't see the puck, so icing is called. Second man advantage icing here for St. Mary's on this man up. Hennessy can't win the draw from Desmond. Zampanti will corral it and hold it behind the net with 12 seconds to go on the man advantage. Far side up to Desmond, chased by Driscoll. And Hingham able to clear it the length of the ice, and... This should do it for the power play, uh, for the penalty kill for Hingham. As out of the box jumps Gordon, and both teams back at full strength now. And St. Mary's trying to work the puck out. They get it over to Zampanti, who has to circle back away from a double forecheck. Gets it over to Willette. Willette goes back the other way to Turen. Turen watched there by Jones, and they can't get it in. Here's a break. Here's Driscoll in alone. Driscoll shot. Save LaRusso. As Reddy took a dive to no effect, but Driscoll gets the shot off yeah, and a Dr save. Driscoll, a good play there to kind of, he just at the blue line and the puck kind of comes to him, but he uses his speed, his size, and his strength to get a look there on that you know, odd man rush. Two good chances for Hingham of late, and they they came about by just kind of hard work and good puck bounces, and you almost think that's what they're going to need to get a goal. Saved by LaRusso, McNally can't get it in front. Now it's sent up high to Terrace. Terrace thought he might have had another man over there. He does get it over to McNally now. McNally over skates and clearing is uh, number 19, Frady, but he can't control it. McNally now to Betts. Betts has a man. He's got Terrace with him. He makes a move, and he can't get a shot off. And quickly coming back is uh, Scally, who gets the puck out of the St. Mary's end. But O'Rourke stands tall and gets it back looking for Betts. Can't connect. This is Bono, Anthony Bono. Off the boards, but uh, circled back by Jake Higgins. And Higgins looking for Betts this way. Kind of no possession here. Now Betts a shot blocked there by uh, Scally. They can't get it out. Shot by Higgins is blocked by uh, Connor Foley. Foley gives chase now. Down the right wing. Leaves it for Pedro. Finds an open man. Oh, what a crushing hit by O'Rourke. But O'Rourke's going to go off. Might be a high stick. I stick, roughing, interference. There's a multitude of things. Well, he Frady was open there. there. And O'Rourke will go to the box again. But interference, he just, good call, Mike. For O'Rourke, he can't be doing that. You know, if you're Hingham, you're a team, you're built. You're built from the back up. You're built on defense. You're built on depth. You're built on playing a full game. They're going to find themselves in a lot of one, two, nothing games. You can't just keep taking penalties if you're going to win a low-scoring game, especially as one of the team's most talented defensemen. Yep. Tough one there, and uh, they'll they'll. Have be without O'Rourke for a minute and a half and now good play by Gordon to get it out good hustle by Jeff Gordon the clear in by St. Mary's intercepted by Jones who sends it the length of the ice Lo Russo will leave it in the corner St. Mary's defenseman play catch behind the net Foley to uh, McLaughlin McLaughlin's long pass up for Bono goes for icing that's three icings while man up for St. Mary's and that's not a good trend speaking of things you can't do you say, Mary's, you can't just, it's a waste of time, first off, because uh, not only are you not breaking it out, not only are you not getting in the offensive zone, but you're going back into your own, and you're giving Hingham a chance to kind of create something offensively shorthanded. And your best skaters are skating a lot longer <laughs> in the second period. Jacob steps into a drive, goes wide and low. Now, Terrez, Terrez has played a good game today, 16. He can't control that one. This is going to be offsides. As Mirabito get in ahead of it, Mirabito's going to complain about that one. But yeah, it's driving driving the St. Mary's coach is crazy right now. The icing's and offsides during a man advantage. There's kind of momentum killers if you keep having to take draws on the man advantage. Can't well, really get anything going. Coach Lee thinks they missed that offside, saying that 
that Marabito might have had a skate back on the blue line. So. And you they, need, they need another guy out there. Pedro will come off. And, and you Pedro mentioned Mir Tarez. He's been kind of one of the staples from Hingham here. He's been all over the ice. He's created some chances. He played well in the defensive zone. Yep. St. Mary's on the power play for another 36 seconds. Mirabito and Bono will work it on the corner. Mirabito, head fakes behind, will backhand it back to Zampanti. Can't get all of it, and it's uh, handled by Jacobs and set the length of the ice for Hingham as they try to kill off the last 22 seconds here. LaRusso will leave it behind for Foley. Foley playing the point on the power play, gets it over to Zampanti. Zampanti, the short pass up to Mirabito. He'll skate uh, cross ice. And deep into the Hingham end, watched by Jones, but comes all the way around. Now watched by Jacobs. Five seconds to go now on the power play for St. Mary's. Shot by Foley down low. Delay call coming up here. I believe it's on Hingham. As St. Mary's maintains control, Mirabito gets it back to Pedro. A delayed call coming up on Hingham again as now O'Rourke touches it. And it's a tripping call on uh, McNally. I didn't see that one. Yeah, I missed the call as well. I think it was in the... The big uh, mess that was created in front of Persanini there. But uh, the official from the neutral zone saw it, so he'll sit for a minute and a half. I'll tell you, it's been a parade to the penalty box this period. There have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight penalties this period, four to each team. And we mentioned both team. We mentioned before the game that both teams kind of needed to stay out of the box because it cost them both yesterday. And uh, <laughs> either team doing a great job of that, but it hasn't cost them yet. So third penalty in a row to Hingham. That it, it's going to take its toll eventually. As now O'Rourke wielding that lumber freely behind the net is Desmond. Desmond with some ice back to McLaughlin. McLaughlin loves to shoot the puck, lets it rip, goes wide, and now uh, Caram's over to Hennessy, who's able to get it out of the zone. McLaughlin takes his skates and stops it there. And now Willette will circle back. He'll go back the other way. Good play up to McLaughlin. That play looked offsides too. It's a four on one in close. And there's another delay call coming up here on Hingham. This is incredible. Give him the Comes puck. back to the point to Willette. Cross ice to McLaughlin. One time goes wide. Centering pass by Frady. Can't get through. And Slash, another slash. Interesting strategy. St. Mary's, a lot of teams, if you have a power play and there's Doyle call, the, yep. give them the puck, get it five on three. But St. Mary's wants to set up that six on four, maximize the total time. And if you're hanging them, again, another penalty. Not only, we were talking about how great, how great they are defensively, not only can you be taking penalties because you're a defensive team and you're giving them a chance for an easy goal when your mantra is don't give up anything easy, but you're also, they don't have a lot of offensive firepower. If you create a bigger deficit for yourself, it's harder to come back. And it's a minute and a half that it's going to be, you're probably not going to get any offensive possession. It's a minute and a half that you need. Great play by Gordon. 44 seconds total of uh, two men down. We're down to 32 of that. But Gordon made a great play and actually got held by uh, McLaughlin coming out or held up. Nice play by O'Rourke to step up and send it deep with under a minute to play in the period and 20 seconds to go on the two-man advantage for St. Mary's. Coach Lee says, let's hurry it up here. We got two guys uh, uh, up. McLaughlin now going solo and scores! Wow! They let about three seconds go off the clock. Great wrist shot by Brady McLaughlin to make it two to nothing. That serves me. I was up here shaking my head when I saw McLaughlin do that, but he scores. I mean, five on three, take it from behind your own net into the blue line and just take a wrister from 20 feet out. But if you got yeah, a wrister like that, you might as well. That's not in any book of power play plays, but when it scores, it's a good play. And Hingham gets one guy back. Uh, St. Mary's will still have a man advantage for, for uh, 54 seconds here, 44 to go in the period. They actually let three seconds run off that clock after the goal, but now they took both penalties down. That's not the correct call. The, power the play last penalty last was, yeah, it was called at 1340, so... They'd have to go to 13.40 with a minute. Would go to 14.50. And they put the 54 seconds back up, so. It's got to be driving Coach Messina insane here. The penalty and in the last minute, two, two, two things. You're giving up goals when that's kind of, you can't be giving up anything easy if you're hanging, especially playing against St. Mary's today. 
So St. Mary's still on the power play. They now lead it two to nothing. And centering pass is loose in front, and it comes back to uh, Pedro. Pedro gets it to Bono. Bono can't find the handle here with 25 seconds to go in the period. Whistle goes, and the uh, the official is on a uh, a monologue down there. We see another <laughs> net off its moorings. 32 seconds on the power play for St. Mary's, and 22 to go in the period. Jones bangs it around, comes onto the stick of McLaughlin. He has the second goal today. Now O'Rourke able to backhand it, but kept in at the line by Mirabito. Quickly over to Pedro. Pedro looks. Trying to find uh, McLaughlin open, but intercepted by Jacobs, who clears to center. Mirabito knocks it down. Mirabito will come up to Pedro, and it's knocked away by O'Rourke. Mirabito trying to go horizontally, and they can't come up with the uh, possession needed here, and the clock runs out in the second period. With St. Mary's leading at 2 to nothing. Uh, Ten seconds to go of power play time for St. Mary's when we open up the third period. And I think we may need most of the time in between periods to recap what happened in that period, primarily penalty-wise, as there were nine minor penalties in that period, and ne- neither coach wants to see that, but more importantly, two goals scored in the in the period. Uh, early on, 48 seconds in, uh, first goal of the game scored by Eric Pedro with a great setup by Dante Marabito. Yeah, Marabito did a great job there. He's been doing it all day, finding his teammates. He's been probably logged the most ice time out of anybody on this ice. He's playing every special teams. He's out there every other shift. And special teams players are playing a lot today. But Marabito kind of just found Pedro out front, and that's a great connection to have. And then the second goal uh, coming near the end of that period at 14-15. Uh, big number 22, Brady McLaughlin with uh, the unassisted power play goal, two-man advantage. And, Mike, you called that one well. Not your uh, typical power play, move the puck and get a shot. Yeah, he, but he, he took another approach. But if you got a two-man advantage, these Hingham defensemen love to be aggressive, but playing five on three, they kind of just sat back on their heels. They backed into their goaltender, and McLaughlin was able to use his wicked wrist shot, as they say around here, and uh, able to beat a great goalie in person. But if you're Hingham, you, got, you can't be expecting to keep taking all these penalties and expect to be playing against a power play that's got the likes of both Marabitos, Pedros, and Panty, and McLaughlin, who is the goal scorer, and expect to stay, stay perfect on the penalty kill. The penalties just have to catch up to you at some point, and uh, they paid the price. Yep. Uh, they are announcing the McLaughlin goal, and it, it will go unassisted uh, at 14-15. So we're going to take a little break here for Nantucket Nectars and for uh, Sullivan Tire and for My Hockey Live, along with Serio Video, Pat Serio. Uh, Mike McNamara and I, Paul McNamara here, bringing you all the action of the crew. Mike McNamara and Paul McNamara. Pat Serio bringing us all the action here from the Christy Serino Christmas Classic, the consolation game after two periods. It's 2 to nothing, St. Mary's of Lynn by virtue of a couple of second period goals and Hingham with its work cut out for it, Mike. Yeah, Hingham, not a lot of offensive firepower on this team, so... Uh... Two goals, a big deficit here for one period, but they're going to try to try to catch St. Mary sleeping here and try to tie this game up. Damon Marabito with a shot that goes wide onto the stick of Brady McLaughlin. <coughs> McLaughlin sends it in deep. Pass in front. Backhander goes wide off the stick of Damon Marabito. Here's Zampanti with a shot through a screen, saved by Personini. Loose in front. McLaughlin can't keep it in. And now Bono, fresh off the bench, gets it over to Zampanti, who wings it around the the dasher in deep. Jones now backhands it to an open wing. Cutting in the middle. Uh, the the uh, Spartans now backhanded by Foley. It's loose in front. The net is off again. Play continues here. As Fratty, uh, Frady made a great play there. It's still loose in front. St. Mary's trying to get a third goal here and really make it difficult for Hingham. They lead it 2 to nothing, and with a flurry, they are buzzing here early in the third period. And a goal here from St. Mary's would be huge. Nick got knocked off there again, but the ref kind of let play go. They almost had a couple goals there, but like you said, three goals would be a almost insurmountable lead. As we've seen, Hingham's now been shut out five straight periods, plus they got shut out by the prep. Not not the best offensive team. They build from the back up, but they got to find some, some sort of offense here. Here's big Driscoll, number three, carrying it over the line for Hingham. 
He turns, he's hit by Turin there, and, but he's able to get it down low onto the stick of Hennessy, but Hennessy has to chase it back as it caroms off his stick. And now center line by Willette trying to find Reddy over there. Reddy's pass in the middle, intercepted by Hennessy. Hennessy cuts into the middle, shot, save, rebound, save again by LaRusso. Comes back to the point, O'Rourke, a shot deflected wide, deep into the corner, and Ryan Turin now tries to get it by uh, Kornak at the, at the blue line, and finally does. This is Turin giving chase, but good play by O'Rourke. O'Rourke trying to sneak behind Driscoll and go on the... In the off wing, but now stolen by Mirabito. Dante Mirabito in low. Shot went off Personini and off the side of the net. Boy, Mirabito's dangerous every time he has the puck. Yeah, especially with Marco Rourke trying to jump into the offensive play. Mirabito is able to get a one-on-one and almost scores on Personini. Great pass by O'Rourke over to uh, Hennessy, open on the far side, but Hennessy was kind of skating backwards out of the play and didn't get a, a lot on it. Long pass up for Mirabito. Not sure why that didn't get called for icing. Maybe someone got a glove on it. Intense pace here, up yeah. and down early on in the third. Yeah, a lot of intensity here. It was kind of lacking from Hingham at some points, but uh, now they're kind of realizing they got 12 minutes to get two goals, so they need to get something going here. Frankie Higgins, nice play to control things and settle down, and now Mirabito steps over the line. He's got Higgins all over him. He gets a shot off, goes wide. Puck loose in the Hingham end. Mirabito on it. Centering pass, looking for Frady, can't connect. And nice play by Scally at the line to keep it in. Goes down low to Tom Frady. Frady back to Scally. Scally shot directed wide by Mirabito. And good play by Frady back to Scally. The same, same guys touching the puck here. As play continues and uh, Scally's long shot in is deflected up into the netting. Yeah, St. Mary's matching the intense pace from Hingham, maybe even more so. But you know what they say about a two-goal lead. You know, sometimes teams will fall into a trap. But St. Mary's being very impressive here, not letting that two-goal lead get in their head, and they want to add to it. Zampanti trying to play catch with his partner Kramer and hopped out of the zone. They dump it in deep, and Hingham's able to clear. This is 19. Drew Hickey trying to work it down the boards by his uh, opposing 19, Frady. They finally get it in deep. Zampanti back on it there. Mark Zampanti will come all the way around the net. And Cohen does a good job to negate that play over there, but it's skated away by Anthony Bono. Bono, good play by Will Jones from Hingham to knock it off his stick, but Bono continues and picks it up. Centering pass for Frady, knocked away by the Hingham defense. Cohen now controls for Hingham to Jacobs, trying to find uh, help on the right wing in Drew Hickey. Not a lot of long, long puck possessions for anybody here. No, both, both teams keeping that intense pace. They're pressuring everybody, forcing turnovers, not letting anybody in close, but uh, icing here. And now St. Mary's, both teams will change, and St. Mary's will get an offensive zone draw. 10.48 to go, period number three of the consolation game here. Nantucket Nectars and Sullivan Tire bringing you all the action here on My Hockey Live of the Christy Serino Christmas Classic. Oh, Reddy takes a big elbow up high by Lastoria. Reddy slow getting up. With everything that's been called, I, I don't know why they didn't call that one, but here's a two-on-one the other way. McNally to Betts. Trying to find McNally on the return pass blocked by McLaughlin. Good play by Mc, uh, Brady McLaughlin there on that two-on-one. And McLaughlin does a good job using his size, kind of not letting up anything easy get by him. Here's Reddy. Good to see him back up into the play. Centering pass looking for Turin. Stolen by McNally. McNally off the boards and a delayed call to St. Mary's coming up here as Reddy is holding his head. They got to look at him. He, he took he took a hit right in the head. Yeah, Reddy just Reddy just a freshman. He's got a lot of ice time tonight. It's kind of been all over. He's made some good plays. He had a penalty earlier, but uh, with the bad came a lot of good, and it would be bad to see him down for St. Mary's. I think that's a tripping call on McLaughlin at. Uh, 446 of period number two. And so Hingham will get another power play chance here. And shorthanded Mirabito breaks away. Dante Mirabito in alone, saved by Personini. Mirabito still with the puck. Mirabito wasn't in completely alone as uh, Jacobs caught up to him. He was in alone, but Jacobs yeah. bothered him enough. To yeah, Jacobs did a great job playing center field. O'Rourke being really aggressive on the power play, trying to hold that blue line. But Jacobs does a great job. Not only getting back and catching up with Marabito, but keeping his feet moving when he gets there and not, not uh, hooking him, as we've seen happen before with uh, Jeff Gordon and not going to the box and ending the power play himself. 
It was a heck of a play by Eric Pedro. Uh, he's made a lot of good plays today to send Mirabito away shorthanded. St. Mary shorthanded again, sends it in on Personini, and he has to cover up with Bono on the forecheck there. 101 to go on the St. Mary's penalty. Hingham has not scored at all today, never mind on the power play. Connor Foley now squaring off with McNally, and they're both waved out of there. Bono will step in for St. Mary's and Hennessy for Hingham. Hennessy, a natural center, trying to go on his backhand, but controlled by St. Mary's. O'Rourke now with room. O'Rourke starts McNally out. McNally goes cross ice for Jacobs. Jacobs in the middle to Hennessy. Hennessy to Driscoll right under his stick. Nice setup by Hingham. And those are the chances you need to capitalize on if you're going to come back from this deficit. O'Rourke to Jacobs to McNally, wide open, and he scores. Once again, Hingham, Hingham we see not a, not a great offensive team, so you need to take advantage of your power plays. We thought they missed a costly opportunity there, but McNally made up for it. He's able to get the pass from, I believe it was Jacobs. Well, here, if it was Jacobs or O'Rourke, but uh, streaking in the net, and he's able to beat uh, LaRusso on the one time or nothing LaRusso could have done from there. McNally, a great play. You can tell the experience coming through there as he doesn't quit on the play. He stays with it, knows, the power, knows they still have a power play, takes advantage of the man advantage, and... Uh, Makes it 2-1. Yeah, Hingham finally uh, signs a life here. I mean, the last minute or so, they've looked really strong after St. Mary's was carrying the play again in this period. It should be McNally from Jacobs and O'Rourke, a power play goal at 5:39. Jones off the faceoff, trying to get it in deep. They get it halfway in deep where Scally will play it for St. Mary's. He bounces it off the boards looking for Damon Mirabito, but Dante Mirabito picks it up now. Dante off the glass up for Pedro to Damon Mirabito. One on two. Damon Mirabito in. Good shot saved by Personini. And the rebound is loose and the whistle goes, but great job by Damon Mirabito to use uh, the defenseman as a screen. Yeah, Damon Mirabito, we haven't seen a ton of him tonight. It's kind of been just the Pedro and uh, Dante. his brother Dante Mirabito show, especially with all the with all the penalties, both sides, them two play more special teams. But Damon does a great job there getting in the action there and almost putting one past Personini. Again, great pass by Pedro to hit Dante uh, Damon Mirabito in stride. Send him away. Bono now takes a hit from uh, Jones over there and they battle on the boards. Connor Foley comes up with it for St. Mary's. Centering pass. Knocked away to the line. Kept in by Zampanti. Through a screen. Blocked by Jacobs in front. And Hingham breaks out four on two if they hustle. Jeff Gordon over the line. Headed to the net is uh, uh, number nine, Frankie Higgins. Good idea, but good play by the St. Mary's defense. to thwart that chance. And now diving on top of, uh, of uh, the... St. Mary's defenseman Zampanti is his fellow number 25, Kyle Latorni, first shift out. He's making his presence known. Here he is, Latorni starts a two-on-one. He's out there with number 15, Avery Iaria. The uh, 13th and 14th forwards today for Hingham, making their presence felt, and now throwing his weight around is Latorni. They called a slash on that yesterday. Uh, That's in the book if you hit the goalie, and Latorni... Talk about making your uh, 35 or 40 seconds count out there. Yeah, them two are out there with Austin Cohen, who we also haven't seen a ton out of. And uh, Coach Messina has got to be happy with the work those three just put in there, kind of kind of bringing the energy there and building on the Great momentum hanging, Hingham has, and especially with Torney throwing Torney, his body around. Big body. Off the faceoff, Le- Le- O'Rourke with a long shot in, saved by LaRusso. Mirabito on the rebound in the corner. Will sneak it back for Kramer. Kramer's pass... Return pass intercepted by Betts. Betts trying to find some room with that big range, but Damon Mirabito sends away Pedro. Pedro with feet flying. Can't get it through. Good defensive stand by Hingham there, and Terra's on the back check, picks it up. Terra's all the way around looking for Betts. Funny bounce, and it's loose, and Damon Mirabito on it momentarily. Good play by uh, Pedro to Dante Mirabito. Dante Mirabito, fancy stick handling in the corner. And they double team him and take it away. O'Rourke behind the net to Kornak. Kornak up to Terrez. Terrez skating backwards out of the zone. Gives it to McNally, but he can't control. And Dante Mirabito will settle it for St. Mary's and lay it back to Kramer. Kramer up up the ice. That's too many men on the ice, but they get away with it. And uh, 
St. Mary's now Dante Marabito kicks it, trying to find a teammate. Betts can't control. And now nice play by Kornak to step into it and try to hit Terra's in the corner. Terra's one hand chop to get it to McNally. McNally centering pass intercepted by whom else? Dante Mirabito. Mirabito loses and O'Rourke quickly on it for Hingham. O'Rourke takes a hit there from Willette but gets it in deep and now it's settled by McLaughlin behind the net. 6.35 to go. 2-1 to one, St. Mary's with the lead. Long pass. Ooh, Jones nearly had that one picked off and they wave off icing on that. It, there's no way anybody touched that after the red line but Uh, nice play down there by Frady. Frady in the corner to Reddy. Reddy circles. Reddy over skates. Reddy now will go behind the net looking for Desmond. Now a, a tough angle shot from Frady goes wide. McLaughlin just bangs it off the boards in deep. Jones takes a hit from Frady. Hingham able to finally get it out. Center fielded by, by McLaughlin who sends it in a, a deep again as the teams will change. Quickly up to Driscoll. Driscoll to Hennessy. Leaves it for Driscoll. They've got a left wing open. I'm not sure Driscoll saw him. Driscoll now. He had uh, Jack Grady open momentarily. Driscoll, good job to continue the play. Get it back to Jacobs. His shot blocked up high by Connor Foley. And Frady now trying to get it out for St. Mary's. Jones keeps it in. Gets a shot on net. Mark Zampanti to the line and out. Jacobs sends it in deep, but they clear. Hingham will change now as McLaughlin with some skating room and 5.19 to go in a 2-1 hockey game. McLaughlin off the sideboard just bangs it into the Hingham end. Jacobs can't find the handle and now on it is Frankie Higgins. Higgins 2-1-2, two 2-1-3 on two, two on now. Higgins shot goes off the side of the post I believe. This past two minutes have been two Curious. most exciting minutes of the yeah. game. Back Great. and forth no both whistles, teams. No penalties, just good hockey. They try to find Gordon, but instead Zampanti sends uh, Bono away. Bono backhands it in deep and giving chases Damon Marabito. Also Connor Foley. Foley knocked down by Frankie Higgins. Higgins comes up with it. Higgins trying to find Jeff Gordon. Nice play by Connor Foley from St. Mary's to intercept and send deep. Foley heads to the bench to change. Jacobs now with it for Hingham. And the door kicks open and the whistle will go. Not sure why that door was unlocked. On the opposite side from the bench area, Chris Flanders, closest guy to it, but I'm sure he didn't open the door. <laughs> Four and a half to go here in a two to one hockey game. And uh, it's been, like we said, the past two minutes, very exciting. It's Hingham and St. Mary's both up in their intensity. Now it's a one goal game with just under five to play here. O'Rourke with some skating room. He's on the go, Mark O'Rourke over the line. Shot blocked by uh, Kramer. Kramer pins O'Rourke and Hingham still with control. Betts can't ha find the handle though. Skated out by Dante Marabito, one on three. Marabito tries to go wide on Terrors, the forward playing D. Marabito still with it, walks into the, he's one on four now and he's still got the puck. Finally he loses it. And Betts now overskates as McNally gets it out of the zone but loses control. Ryan Turen back on it and uh, able to get it through center ice. Here's a shock, Mirabito's gonna take a rest for 10 seconds. Oh, what a hit there by Turan up high on Kornak. And Will Jones with it at center ice for Hingham. Trying to get up the left wing, can't connect with Betts. Turan now for St. Mary's, can't get it in deep, he gets it again. Turan now, tough angle shot, save Personini. Terrez will skate it, the rebound, back to the back boys and try to find McNally. Nothing doing this way as Zampanti dumps it in deep for St. Mary's. Now Jones fights with uh, Reddy behind the net. Zampanti will pinch and backhand it down deep. We're down to 3.14 to go. And uh, Frady comes up with it in the right wing corner. Tom Frady still with it. Checked by Kornak. Left wing corner for St. Mary's. Connor Foley joins in. McNally's there for Hingham. And Marshall Therese, Therese uh, throws, a, throws an elbow at uh, Zampanti and play continues. Jones and Bono fight in the corner. Bono out with it. Blocked there by Kornak. Nice play. And uh, Jones back there to pin Bono. And finally McNally digs it up the boards for Grady. But they can't get it out. Great four checking here by St. Mary's with just about two and a half to go. Hingham finally able to get, to get it to center ice. Remember, Hingham has used its timeout already. 
They do not have the benefit of a timeout left. Tom Frady over the line. He'll send it in. It goes off the stick of Will Jones and into the netting. And the faceoff's going to come inside the zone. Not, not sure the ruling on that one. It goes off a Hingham player, but with the momentum off the stick of a St. Mary's shot, they're going to call it to Persadini's right inside the Hingham end. It did go off Jones' stick, but not sure he was in the zone or not. Yeah, Jones deflected it out, and uh... Mirabito to Pedro. The shot goes wide right off the faceoff. Kramer will close for St. Mary's and keep it in deep. Dante Mirabito can't control, but keeps fighting for it. He's over there with Hennessy and Jacobs from Hingham. And uh, Damon Mirabito also for St. Mary's. Damon Mirabito now circles the net. He'll go back the other way and come back this way again. Damon Mirabito, great job of ragging it down low. He finally loses it, and they poke it to center. It's knocked in by uh, Willette, but here's O'Rourke coming the other way. Loses to Mirabito at center ice. And now O'Rourke comes back and sends it in the St. Mary's end where Kramer is on it, quickly over this way to... Kyle Ouellette, Ouellette looking for Mirabito up the middle, misses connections, and with 1.32 to go, icing is called, and faceoff's going to come down in the St. Mary's end. And as we saw yesterday, uh, Coach Tony Messina not shy about pulling the goalie, so uh, that was with a two-goal deficit yesterday. Certainly with a one-goal deficit, he'll work to get Personini out and get an extra guy out there. Yeah, and St. Mary's likes having the luxury to change with that icing call, but can't be happy with an icing there to uh, give an odd defensive zone drop, but a big win. Brady loses control but keeps chasing it. Here's Terez. Terez has played a good game today, 16 for Hingham. And Jacobs, a big hit at center ice to knock Bono down. Puck is loose just outside the Hingham zone. McNally with it. McNally trying to go cross ice to Betts. Ill-advised as right in the way was uh, number 19, Frady. And now Jacobs back on it for Hingham. Jacobs, backhanded pass up to Terez, can't control. And Foley will send it in deep, but offsides is called. And right back out come Mirabito, Mirabito, and, and Pedro. St. Mary's we saw it with their penalty kills and we're seeing it now. A lot of times their best defense is an offense. They like to just keep the pressure high, keep high tempo. They don't like playing in their defensive zone. So we're seeing it now. Both Maravitos and Pedro back on the ice. And even that last shift was a lot of aggression from St. Mary's. 103 to go. Important faceoff control by Hingham, but they give it away at center ice up to Willette. Willette turns and backhands it up for Dante Maravito. He can't control and it comes the other way. His bets. No puck control by anybody right now. Here's O'Rourke and they... They call it offsides and uh, O'Rourke shot the puck after the whistle and St. Mary's coaching staff not happy with that play and now they're going to call Personini off right now and add uh, Jack Hennessy's going to go out there as the sixth skater. Interesting, interesting well, play here to pull a goalie with a new <laughs> faceoff, especially seeing how fantastic Marabito has been in the faceoff top, but they trust McNally, their captain. Important that uh, McNally win it. McNally gets it to Betts. Betts can't get it deep into the zone, and now O'Rourke dumps it in, but they've got to get two men on that puck. Oh, what a great, great <laughs> baseball play there by O'Rourke. Yeah, O'Rourke's got a great stick. And St. Mary's bangs it off the boards with 30 seconds to 31 seconds to go. Now 28. And Jacobs has to retreat 10 feet in front of his cage. Great play by Pedro to forecheck there and send it in deeper. Bono now on it for St. Mary's. Boy, St. Mary's got three guys in deep with a one goal lead. Hennessy gets it to center ice. They finally get it in the zone, but under 10 seconds to go. Here's McNally headed towards the net. Hennessy, a shot goes wide. I think La Russa made the save. Went down to three seconds. They throw it towards the net, but that's going to do it. Willette will knock it out of harm's way, and the whistle's going to go. And the buzzer's going to go, ending this one a 2-1 to -one victory for St. Mary's. Incredible last-ditch effort there from Hingham with a big mess in front of the net, and Hennessy shocked to see the puck come out of stick with a lot of, lot of bodies out in front, but he can't beat La Russa. La Russa makes one last stand in front of the net to secure the 2-1 victory in third place here in the Serino Classic. Yeah, not sure LaRusso ever saw that one, but, but he was able to get credit for the save, and uh, McNally was right there, and Betts was right there, and uh, 
Uh, <laughs> see. They had the best guys out there, but it just uh, was not meant to be for Hingham today. Yeah, after seeing the last couple minutes of that game, it did not seem like a third place game between the intensity of both teams, the skill of both teams. Would not be surprised to see these two meet again, whether it be in a D1 final in North versus South or a Super 8 play-in game. Both these teams have the talent. They have the wherewithal to be there, and uh, they're going to come in third and fourth in the Serena Classic, but this is a great tournament as it shows if this is the consolation game. Yeah, g great points there, Mike. These two teams are... You know, Hingham might have found, they lost two games up here, but they might have found out some things about their team there, uh, especially in the third period. You know, really not a good second period with so many penalties from both teams. And then uh, in the third period, uh, you know, St. Mary's, they didn't look like they were coasting at all, and they were playing hard, but it, it wasn't dropping for them. And then it sort of kept Hingham hanging around, hanging around. That one goal, the power play goal, late in the period, it came at, uh, well, middle, early in the period, 5.39, uh, Billy McNally from Jacobs and O'Rourke made it 2-1, but that's how it finished. Uh, but but it was a well-played third period by both teams. Yeah, certainly Hingham coming away with no no victories, but that's why they play in this tournament, and that's why they play the schedule they do. We saw last year when they just snuck into the tourney and took Division One. So uh, it's their great team, and St. Mary's a great team, and uh, love to see the play again. So we'll uh, we'll stay with the uh, the announcements after the game. Matt Personini, no surprise, uh, will get an all-tournament team uh, award from Hingham. Yeah, and he presented was presented by Pat Driscoll, the uh, AD for Malden Catholic. And I don't think many people are going to argue that he was Hingham's best player throughout the tourney. They called on him. They called on him a lot. And big number 22, Brady McLaughlin, gets the nod for St. Mary's. He had uh, the winning goal, unassisted a power play goal in period number two. And not sure of his stats yesterday, but. Uh, no argument with that pick, uh, Brady McLaughlin. Yeah, he hit the winning goal. Hard to argue with it, but uh, but uh, Dante Marabito might have something to say to his teammate. They might be joking about that in the locker room. Cut, just that, because cut the, that black up in a couple of pieces. <laughs> just because the and just because the sheer, Pedro, just, Pedro had, had yeah, just cause the sheer minutes they well. logged. But uh, McLaughlin does a great job taking out half of the ice with his size and even right. offensively, as we saw with the goal, and logging a lot of minutes on the power play. Yeah, St. Mary's, you could, a lot of guys played well. They played a smart team game, and and they walk away with third place. And, uh, you know, in this tournament, as you said, Mike, the competition to, to be one and one in this tournament is not such a bad thing for St. Mary's, and uh, it, it builds the confidence of the kids going forward and uh, certainly shows they can play with anybody in the state. Yeah, no, especially you play against Austin Prep and you play against Hingham. I mean, Austin Prep, I believe they see them again later in the season. Only lost by one goal to them. They beat. They show an impressive 2-1 victory versus Hingham. Just playing these tough games, and these are the games you need to remember. You need to know how to play when uh, February and March come around. Well, that's going to do it in the first one, the consolation game. Uh, St. Mary's takes it 2-1 over Hingham. Uh, for Mike McNamara and Paul McNamara and Pat Serio, of course, running the show here. And we're going to take a break right now. We may join you around 4.50 if we can uh, grab somebody for an interview at that point. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back at uh, 5 o'clock or just after for the championship game here. It'll be Austin Prep against Malden Catholic for the Christy Serino Christmas Classic 2015 championship. Uh, again, uh, game time is set for 5 o'clock. I want to thank Nantucket Nectars as well as Sullivan Tire and My Hockey Live for bringing you all the action here. Once again, the final, St. Mary's 2, Hingham 1. Uh, we'll be back in a while.